Welcome back to the channel guys. So today I think I have a pretty exciting one for you. I've been saying it and so many others have as well that FPGA is the future of retro gaming. I'm taking the dive into Mr. I got my DE10 nano board. I've got my IO board with the SD RAM. Everything rocking and I have been messing with this thing over the past couple days, playing some games, messing with some cores, seeing what this has to offer. And I am pretty damn excited to share this with you guys today. So I'm gonna be showcasing just a little bit of footage that I recorded while messing around with this, kind of highlighting some of the cores that I was playing, some of the options you'll see. So definitely enjoy that. But I wanna go ahead and talk about this a little bit more, little details that we got going on. So. To get started with this, essentially the base thing you're gonna need is the Terrasic DE10 Nano FPGA board. This board uses an Altera Cyclone 5 FPGA. It has an ARM Cortex A9 dual core CPU at 800 megahertz, HDMI video out, DDR3 one gigabytes of RAM, and so much more. Now, you can also add some optional stuff to this. You can just get started with some cores with just the DE10 Nano, uh, like TurboGrafx-16 and a handful more, but there's some optional boards that you can get out there, um, and they can be a little difficult. You have to keep your eye out. I'll put some links in the description for some places that I know and people I have dealt with if you are interested, but what you can also get is an SD RAM board, and that is definitely recommended because there's plenty of cores that require it. Um, an I.O. board, which is an optional expansion, and it plugs into the GPIO connectors on the board and gives you, you know, VGA out, analog audio, digital optical audio, several buttons to be able to be used for the uh, the user interface for the uh, the menu options. Uh, it's pretty nice, you know, it gives you a lot of options to be able to use this to its fullest potential. There's also a real-time clock board that's not really needed. Some people grab it just to be complete with the thing, and hey, if you can get it on a cheap, why not? Um, also, a USB hub board. There are ones that are specifically made for Mr., but you can also just get, you know, like a maker spot USB hub. I'll put a link in the description to the one I bought. But yes, this thing is definitely amazeballs. The footage I'm showcasing, like I said, I'm showing just a little bit of the options and, you know, playing arcade stuff, that is the big thing for me. That's why I really wanted to get into this was for arcade gaming because I could see in the end, what I'd want to do with this is, is an arcade project, do an arcade build, have a full stand-up using Mr. for all these legacy freaking awesome awesome ass arcade games, you know, Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, plus many more. Every day there's like more cores being added. This is an open source project. The cores that are available now, the ones I have been using have been pretty damn good. And they're being improved almost daily. New ones being added, new arcade cores being worked on. There are tons of options here. So with the cores, I'll highlight some of the the more interesting ones in my opinion, but there's tons of them. But what we have, you can use Amiga, Amstrad CPC, Apple II Plus, Atari 2600, Atari 5200, BBC Micro, Commodore 64, Commodore 16, Commodore VIC-20, Game Boy, MSX, NES, Sega Genesis slash Mega Drive, Sega Master System, Sinclair QL, TI-99, Turbo Graphics or PC Engine, Vectrix, X68000, ZX Spectrum, and so many more, like I said, with, with tons of work on this. It's an open source project, and there's tons of talented people out there working on this, you know, working their asses off to make this an awesome project. The arcade course, we have a ton of awesome ones right now. Uh, some of the ones to highlight, we do have Bomb Jack, Burger Time, Catacomb, Crazy Klong, Kong, Crazy Kong, <laughs> Crazy Kong, Crazy Climber, Defender, Donkey Kong, uh, Frogger, Galaga, Galaxian, Ladybug, Moon Cresta, Moon Patrol, Mr. Dude's Nightmare, Miss Pac-Man, Pac-Man, Pac-Man Plus, Pac-Man Plus is a pretty fun game. Uh, what else do we got here? Scramble, Snapjack, Time Pilot, Woodpecker, and Exevious. There's also tons more. 
Um, I'll put links in the description so you can peep all this information out. The process of getting this set up to run Mister was really simple. It was actually even easier than you know setting up a, a RetroPie system. And that leads me to the next thing I want to discuss because when I was looking through the Mister Wiki, there's a lot of information here, a lot of help, a lot of things to get set up. And like I said, it's very easy. Um, I was surprised. I thought I was going to be getting into something where it was going to take me all day to set this up and tons of you know tinkering and whatnot. And this thing. Don't get it twisted. This is for people who like to tinker, especially the people who want to add to the project and work on things. If you have that kind of talent and you want to jump into this, this is a tinkerer's project. But like I said, at the same time, it was very simple for the end user like me. And I'm, you know, I'm not the, the smartest guy in the world, but I do know my way around Linux and, and other you know, operating systems, front ends and you know, emulation fairly well. But with this Mr. Project, it, it was very simple. I was up and running in just a couple minutes. But looking at the wiki, what I wanted to talk about is when you go in here on the side, and I'll put this, I'll put this in the description so you can read more into this. There's an article that says, why FPGA? And I found this pretty interesting. So the person who wrote this, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna highlight some of the stuff they talk about and comments on it. But he goes on to say, a generic potential user will eventually ask, why do you need to use FPGA while other proven solutions exist, such as the Raspberry Pi? He goes on to say, there are debates how to call the process of simulating real hardware an FPGA. Some people insist it's not emulation, but real hardware replica, while any simulation on traditional CPUs should be called as emulation. He goes on to state, I have my own opinion here. From my viewpoint, if FPGA code is based on a circuit of real hardware, with usual tweaks for FPGA compatibility, then it is called as a replica. Anything else is emulation since it includes different kinds of approximation. So he goes on to say, going back to the original question, why FPGA if it's also just emulation? Well, FPGA emulation is fun fundamentally different than emulation on a CPU. Traditional emulators on CPU executes the code sequentially. This is a tricky way of emulation because real hardware has many chips and all of them are working in parallel. CPU, video chip and logic, audio chip, memory, all of them are working at the same time. So traditional emulators have to take care of all these parts and try to emulate the whole orchestra at the same time by quickly running from one chip to another. It requires a lot of CPU power to emulate even old and slow retro computers. Sometimes even modern CPUs working on 100 times speed of the retro computer is not enough. So an emulator has to use approximation or skip emulation of some less important parts or assume some standard work of emulated systems without extraordinary usage. So he says FPGA emulation works very different from traditional emulation on CPUs. FPGA is a large array of simple triggers and other logic. Exactly the same as all chips and CPU. The only difference is that specific chips and CPU have such triggers and logic permanently connected while FPGA allows to connect them like you want. A special HDL language describes how to connect all these triggers and logic cells. Everything in FPGA works in parallel, like original chips on those devices. Thus, FPGA is pretty much close to original hardware. FPGA does not need high frequencies to emulate retro computers, so it works at a much lower frequency than a traditional emulators require. Since everything in FPGA works in parallel, there is no problem to handle any possible usage of the emulated system. Developers on FPGA usually concentrate on the specific part to make it work correctly, and it will work as it should in any possible scenario. So there you go, I found this fairly interesting you know he also states fpga programming is not so trivial every bit in fpga works in parallel so the developers should also think in parallel as well what's trivial on cpu is not trivial trivial on fpga so definitely an interesting article i kind of highlighted the more important parts there but yes essentially with fpga we're we're simulating the hardware the best way we can we're not simply using software to emulate these games. With my experiences so far with Mr. and these FPGA cores, 
I've been pleasantly surprised. The accuracy is there for the most part. There's still certain issues. Like I'm playing a Famicom disk system here, and this is an experimental core, and the sound is definitely off. Um, it's, it's not perfect. I play Famicom disk system on original hardware, and this is definitely not correct, but it's experimental. It's being worked on. There are updates almost every day with these things. New cores being developed. New cores from other FPGA hardware being ported over. The reason they selected this pro, you know, to use this project on the DE10 Nano is because it's a fairly inexpensive board and it is widely available. The company is known to keep producing these things. So they didn't want to, they didn't want to work on this project on a board that might be produced for a year and then just isn't made anymore and there's limited quantities those kind of things so it's definitely awesome that the way they looked at it was hey we want this to be widely available for as many people as possible to either enjoy this add to the project help out whatever the case may be so that's why it's on the de 10 nano very powerful board definitely good for the cost a lot of people are going to say, you know, I just want to stick to my Raspberry Pi because it's a $35 board. And that's great. You know, this is not the only option out there to play your games. It's a different option. It's, to me, a very interesting one because FPGA is definitely the future of retro gaming in my eyes. There's plenty of awesome clone consoles out there that are using FPGA now. Uh, you know, retro USB with their AVS, which I think is amazing. Analog with their NT, their NT Mini, the Super NT, the Mega SG. Those are awesome devices that use original cartridges. And they're using, you know, FPGA to simulate the system to a very high degree of accuracy. And that's what Mr. is looking to do. You know, that's definitely going to be up to the developers of these cores. And like I said, they're continually being tweaked, fixed. You know, if there's issues out there, they're being worked on, new cores added. It's definitely an amazing time to be alive and playing these games on this kind of hardware. You know, I didn't think this was something that was going to be widely available and so easy to use. You know, like I said, I got this thing up and running in minutes. Um, I had one little issue with audio not coming through, the, but that was because I had it through my capture card. My capture card just did not like the audio. So I went back to my Avermedia Live Gamer Portable and it records audio, but that's not a typical problem most people will experience because not everybody's recording footage, but plugged straight into the TV, using the audio out or VGA, everything works and looks great. The cores I've been messing with have been pretty damn accurate. Turbo Graphics, Sega Master System, NES. I haven't been seeing too many issues. Like I said, Famicom Disk System, definitely some problems with sound. And hopefully with that experimental core, it'll get ironed out over time. So really do appreciate you guys stopping in, hanging out with me for these few moments of your time. I'm super excited about this project. I'm going to be doing a lot more content on this. If there's anything specific you want to see, drop a comment down below. Let me know what kind of Mr. Content you want to know about, and I will take care of you guys. So thank you. Smash that like button. Make sweet ass love to that notification bell. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. What are you waiting for? Come on, guys. You know the drill. And with that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom.